This is Mike Franklin, the property tax guy and assessor audit on YouTube. And today we're going to talk about um, some of the um, areas of New York State that have participated in these cases. Now, um, let's just go through a list and I'll see if I can remember which ones I've done. Um, let's see. I've got, let me see how my thumb here. Westchester County, Dutchess County, Ulster County, Sarah, uh, Sullivan County, Delaware County, Green, Columbia. I don't think I've done Rensselaer. Um, Albany I've done, let me see here. Um, I've done Saratoga. I've done uh, Essex and uh, let's see, Warren, uh, Franklin, Hamilton, St. Lawrence, uh, Lewis, Jefferson, Oswego, Oneida, Onondaga, Cortland, Broome, Tioga, let's see, uh, Wayne, Cayuga, Seneca, Tompkins, mm, I don't think I did Schuyler, um, Monroe, and uh, well, I think that's about it. I'd have to go back and, uh, and, and check. But um, let's see, the last I counted, it was like 28 or 29 counties I've done this in. I participated in these matters. And as of uh, right now, which is um, June 3rd, I think it is, 2023, I participated in well over 250 SCAR cases, small claims assessment review cases. And, um, and um, so, um, you know, the, the SCAR law, Small Claims Assessment Review, is a New York state law, and, um, and I can handle cases in any county. It's all based off of, um, you know, online data. Assessors don't go inside of people's houses or anything like that. So I have access to the same data that they have. Uh, well, I have access to a lot of the data. Uh, the, the part that, you know, I have inventory data that I can get online. Uh, I can get uh, comparable sales. Um, I can I can look up every sale in the state for you know going back quite a ways, based on county, based on town, sorted by you know price or uh, property class or you know variety of different ways. So I've got the sales data. That's not an issue. But what I don't have is um, their uh, their comparable sales report. I want to see exactly what it is that they're using, and I have a right to that data. Uh, I want to know what their land tables are. I want to know what they're charging for those uh, for, um, for various types of land, um, and um, and I'd like to see how uh, they're calculating uh, inventories. And they don't want to provide that data. They claim that that's work product or um, this, that, and the other. But the thing is, is that how do you get how are you going to get to the bottom of it without um, comparing apples and apples? And so I have a pretty regular struggle uh, with these people and. Um, and it's my job to hold them accountable to um, New York State FOIA law and um, into the real property tax law. So basically my function is to keep them honest, uh, but also uh, make, you know, make certain that they're, they're accurate. They can make errors in inventory, which is only natural. Some of them have thousands of properties to value. It's extremely difficult to, to know every detail of all these houses. And so the, one of the first things I do is I take a look at the inventory and I verify with the property owner that it's correct. And, um, and if there's errors in that, there, there can be an argument there. Uh, and then the other arguments are excessive. If people can't sell it for what it's assessed for, that's an argument. Or if there's uh, other properties uh, that um, are as good or better than yours that are assessed for less, we can make arguments um, you know, in that regard. But uh, I'm pretty quick at analyzing. People can call me anytime at no cost and I'll take a look at their situation. And I can tell them pretty quickly whether or not um, uh, whether or not they have a, a case. And um, and a lot of people. Um, I had one guy. You know, he called me up and and um, he thought he was over assessed. And so I I asked him how many bedrooms and bathrooms he had. And uh, he's been living there for thirty years. The house is so big he didn't know the answer to that question. Uh, so the issue there was that um, you know, his kids had all moved out of the house, so he wasn't getting the value of the house. And so it was costing him you know money that was concerning him but it didn't mean that he was overassessed. So I explained all that. And I didn't just say it's so because I said so, which a lot of assessors like to do. Uh, I, I, I explained to him exactly 
why it's not over assessed. And, and, you know, he thanked me for, you know, causing him not to waste more time um, on the matter. He was fairly assessed. In fact, if anything, he was probably under assessed. And, um, you know, that happens all the time. And um, I had a case um, this year where um, I actually helped the guy previously. Um, uh, the assessor committed the welcome stranger violation on him and we were able to get that rectified. And then uh, two years later, um, you know, he got market increases and they were pretty substantial. And, um, and I explained to him that um, those increases are uniform and there's really no argument to be made. And, um, and so that was the end of that. And so um, I would say a good half of the people that call me um, are not over, under, are not over assessed. Uh, I review it and I explain it to them and then they just, they, they move on. And, um, and, uh, and I had one guy, you know, call me up and, uh, and, you know, they'd gone from, oh, like 85% equalization to 100% equalization. And if you brought the previous year to 100%, his increase was like 300,000. And, um, and, you know, of course, that's a lot. And um, so I, I asked him, have you, did you do any work to the property? And he says, well, yeah, I added a three car garage and, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and actually the increase was like three, 268, if I remember correctly. And so, um, and so I, well, you know, what it cost to, you know, build that. And it's like, well, you know, that and the small market increase, you know, accounted for the increase. And so, and, you know, and, you know there's just nothing to argue. And, um, and, and that was the end of that. But, um, but, uh, but what a lot of the assessors don't realize is that I'm actually helping them and saving them time by, by, um, by, by um, you know, weeding out the properties that are, are not uh, over, over assessed. It, it saves them, you know, uh, bar time, scar time, you know, time talking to the assessor. So I'm, I'm actually helping them. And, and, and what we're trying to do is just get to what is accurate, what is proper, Nothing more and nothing less, and that's um, and that's really really all there is to it. Um, I mean, a lot of the assessors, like the city of Syracuse, uh, they like to uh, resist me, and the assessor in the town of Manlius likes to uh, resist me. Delay foils. You know, city of Syracuse is denies them. Manlius, you know, delays them. Although he's been getting better, and um, and uh, you know, they just they just need to just follow the law. Do the, do the job properly, respond to the foils. Don't think everybody's attacking them. They get defensive because they're not at hundred percent. I mean, Manlius is, but the city of Syracuse is defensive because their assessments are in disarray. It's like, it's okay if things are in disarray. It's okay if there are errors. There's bound to be errors when you have 41,000 properties, but, but don't try to cover it up. Just you know, go through the appeal processes, give people the data. If they're right, they're right, and um, and but they, but they don't want to do that. But so all across the state, I've dealt with um, you know dozens of assessors, and uh, and I was talking to one town supervisor, and uh, he had actually only ever known one assessor in his entire life, and um, and so I have a different perspective on this because I've dealt with this stuff in so many cases, and um, you know and, and you know I was a state hearing officer in six counties. Um, let's see, Hamilton, St. Lawrence, Lewis, Oneida, Jefferson, and Oswego. I heard cases in those counties, and uh, for four years, and um, and so I, I got, I've got quite a bit of experience about how this how the SCAR process works. You know, they have a SCAR hearing officer manual. I probably read the thing ten times very carefully, and so um, so anyway, I just check on the assessors, make certain that them. Um, uh, you know, I, I just take a look at what it is that they're doing. Um, I, I call them on the phone and get a feel for, um, you know, how they're responding. Uh, if they're above board, they give me my data. You know, everything will be um, cordial and we'll just get down to the facts. But if they, if they uh, uh, blow me off, if they uh, evade my foil, if they, uh, if they um, uh, just completely uh, disregard my foil, then I'm going to be doing a lot of cases in their town until that changes. Because when there is a town that behaves that way, it's basically a formula to make me money. And, um, but that's not what this is about. It's about, it's about getting it right. 
And um, I never try to get people more than they deserve because it's not necessary because there's so many people who are over assessed that it's just basically an endless market of people across the state, uh, you know, for that issue. So there's absolutely no reason for me to try to help people get more than they deserve. It's not the proper thing to do, and I don't do it. Uh, this is Mike Franklin, the property tax guy.